check check. I think we're good to go. Is anybody out there? Yep, we've got Vanessa right off the start. So uh, here we are, everybody. We're at the official official first live chat for us at houseimprovements.com. Uh, many of you might have uh, tuned in uh, last week. We did kind of a just a dry run, and uh, we're quite amazed at the amount of people that showed up with no future planning on our part as far as letting you know that it was going to happen. So it's uh, it's looking like we're kind of getting the same kind of people showing up here again. we got Vanessa and Rob. Hi, guys. Glad you could make it to the chat. Um, so this is live chat right now, but it will go onto our channel for other people to view as time goes on. So, uh, uh, you know, for anybody that maybe misses them because you can't make it, you're at work or whatever, you'll be able to follow up with them on our channel. So hi, Sean in Alaska. How's it going? Uh, you have Echo. Are you hearing an echo? Is the sound okay? What's the sound like, everybody? Uh, my tech guy is saying it was all right, so hopefully uh, we're okay for everybody. Uh, so we've got about 32 people watching so far. And that's good, and they're starting to roll in here right away. <laughs> Sean says, Sean from Alaska says he's good. He's cold. Uh, it's been actually really nice here in Saskatchewan, so uh, we're getting a uh, fairly mild winter so far, but I'm sure we'll pay for it eventually. Uh, Vanessa says we're good. Uh, sounds fine. <laughs> sounds fine now, Sean says. Uh, we've got three phase. Hey, Shannon. Hi, three phase. Nice to see you. Super sup. Uh, what you planning forward? Well, uh, that is something we're going to get to. So uh, as we give everybody a little bit of a chance to get logged in here and then start following us, uh, we are going to look at our, we're going to kind of do our yearly uh, review of like 2019 and what we're looking forward to doing in 2020. Uh, those of you who have been around for a while, uh, you're used to seeing this from us every year now for the last, I'm, I'm not sure, a few years we've been doing it, but it's generally just on a video. We decided to do it in a live chat today. So uh, once I get through that, we're gonna for sure go to a bunch of questions and try to answer some questions. Um, we're live right now. Um, that's just the way. <laughs> We're all new to this, so we're just uh, feeling our way through it. So let's just take a couple more looks here at the screen, who's tuning in and some comments, and then we're gonna get to the uh, 2019 year in review. So we got uh, Sam Henke, hi from Kansas. Glad you're tuning in today, Sam. Uh, Jeff Crouch, uh, what's up from Iowa? Uh, Alabama, US, we got Michael Finale. That's great. So we got lots of U.S. people. Here's a Canadian, uh, Jim Alexander from Ontario, and uh, the Rig Chief, Canada as well. So, so we've got our our U.S. and Canadian uh, fans tuning in. So that's good to see. We got Shadows YT. You helped me a lot through college, and the videos helped me understand. Well, I'm uh, I'm glad we can help you. That's why we're here. So we're, yeah, we've got lots of people. We're, we're up over 100 people tuned in right now. So that's awesome, guys. Like to see it. Um, I think uh, this is a good time to just kind of break away a little bit. Still live, but I'm just going to do my year in review. And we're just going to look at a few things and uh, get that out of the way. And then we can, we can talk a little more uh, just through the chat. So, so like I said, we, we always do this year in review. And uh, so in, in 2019, uh, we had another good year. As far as uh, our sub numbers were up, uh, watch time, we released all the videos like we usually do everything. So, you know, all that kind of stuff was good. And I just want to thank every every one of you who have been watching and liking and subscribing and sharing all our videos. Um, that's what we need. That's that's what we appreciate because that helps us out as a channel. Uh, anytime you're watching a, one of our videos that we put out or anything we put out, uh, if you can click the thumbs up if you liked it, that helps us immensely. And and honestly, for any YouTube creator, if you're watching their stuff, give them the thumbs up if you like what they have. Um, so another thing I want to touch on is our patrons. Uh, so Patreon, uh, for those of you who maybe aren't 100% sure what it is, it's just a way to help support YouTubers like myself uh, in a monetary way. And there's it's nothing crazy or lavish it doesn't have to be you can if you want to <laughs> we won't say no but uh, you can go on there and basically uh, give us a tip give us a donation sort of thing and that that's what patrons about and we have some patrons that just stay with us all the time and and some that come and go as their uh, 
as their situation allows it. So, so I want to thank all the patrons. Uh, we really appreciate you guys and uh, are glad that uh, a good number of you stick around all year. And some of you have been with us right from the start too. So we really appreciate that. I've kind of got some notes here. So if I'm looking down, it's just because I, it's not really scripted, but I've got some bullet points I want to touch on. So, um, so like always with Patreon, uh, we'll have a link below this video after, and you can go down there if you want to check it out more, sign up or, or find out more what, what it's all about. So um, with Patreon, we always give a shout out and a thank you to our top contribute contributor. And that was uh, Stephen Weaver. I, actually, I'm not sure if it's Stefan or Stephen, but uh, again, Stephen, you're right at the top as far as contributions, and we really appreciate your help. Uh, also, our longtime supporters with top contributions, we've got uh, Stefan Key, Anthony. Oh, I might have. Uh, sorry, that should be Stefan Weaver and Anthony Key, Michael uh, Labar, Dar Clovier, and Carl Mandel. So those are kind of our guy, our people. I shouldn't say guys because there's a lady in there as well, and they're all in there. Uh, oh, oh, who we got here? <laughs> Kim Barnett, she says, say my name. My husband doesn't believe you're live. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. I'm glad you're tuning in. Hopefully your husband believes you now. Uh, so anyways, those were our top uh, cont contribution people and long timers as well on uh, Patreon. In 2019, we gained about 120,000 uh, subs. So that's subscribers to our channel, and uh, that's really uh, helped our number out quite a bit. It actually helped us to to surpass the half million subscriber mark. I think uh, we're right around 555,000, 58,000, something like that. So that's awesome. Um, we attributed a lot of that growth to all of you existing subscribers as well, because with you liking and sharing our stuff, uh, that just helps uh, all, of our, uh, all of our videos get out there and be seen by more people. So we appreciate the subbing and the sharing and the liking. Uh, some of the other stats for 2019, we, we uh, posted up 30 new videos. Okay, so that's we're usually in that 20 to 30 as far as uh, video releases every year, and we try to stick with that. Uh, we did 20 vlogs, which was new for us in 2019. And uh, sorry, I got sidetracked with everything. What's going on here? I'm being pointed to. Uh, one million is our next goal. That's from uh, Sup, Super Sup. So he just put it that. Yeah, and absolutely, one million. That'd be awesome to reach that as far as subscribers. So sorry, I get a little distracted with the side screen. It's hard to keep track of everything going on. Uh, so 30 videos, 20 vlogs in 2019. I think the vlogs went over quite well. We're going to have a few more of those uh, coming up in 2020. Our channel received 24 million views. So that means you guys sitting and watching me do whatever you're trying to learn how to do. <laughs> uh, so that's about two and a half million hours of watching me. So that's kind of crazy. But uh, anyways, so views were really good last year. We had 225,000 likes. That's clicking the thumbs up icon, which is awesome. And 120,000 shares. So again, awesome. That that just helps spread the word about houseprudence.com. So uh, let's see our, our most, our two most watched videos that we released this year were the how to sand and fit, refinish hardwood floors. So that video has done really well. There's lots of people watching it, liking it, and uh, hopefully using the information that we had there. The other one was uh, how to tile a shower wall, which was all part, that was part of that uh, whole bathroom renovation series that we did there. So they were both wildly popular and then we're really happy about that. So um, what, who do we got going here? Let's, should we take a couple names here? So we got uh, Terry L. Did you receive a YouTube play button? Actually, we did receive that. Uh, I think we even shot a video maybe about that, or we had it in one of our yearly windups. Uh, that was a couple years ago, though. That was for 100,000 subs. I actually don't know when we get the next button. It could be half a million, and it always seems like they're a few months behind getting them out. But if we get one, we're gonna we're gonna share it with you guys and, and be excited about it. So absolutely, and that was uh, that was Terry L. Thanks, Terry. Uh, John N. Kim, always look forward to your videos. They're very helpful. Uh, my drywall looks great. <laughs> awesome, John. I'm glad that we could help you out and uh, that your, your boarding job turned out well. 
who else we got there? Jason May. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Jason. How are you doing? Glad you tuned in. Uh, should we get back to a few more things here? Okay. So, uh, so besides our YouTube channel, many of you probably know that we have the forum and we do try to steer people to the forum. I know lots of you make comments on the videos and I do try to read all those and reply back if, if I can. Uh, but if you have an actual question, whether it's about the video or maybe a project you're doing, hey, uh, Chaka Gillis, thanks a lot. Nice to see you. Ryobi is trash. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's not the best quality tool. Let's put it that way. Uh, they, they have a lot of stuff. And it's a good entry level tool, but not, maybe not the best. Thanks, uh, Chuck Gillis. Thank you. Uh, what was I talking about here? Oh, the forum. So we prefer you go to the forum and post up any questions there. I'm there every day, multiple times, helping out, answering questions. We have other people there and uh, helping out as well. So thanks, Chaka. Also, that was a super chat. So I appreciate that. Um, so, like I said, just please use the forum for questions. Uh, the live chat's going to be great because we're going to be able to answer some questions, but the forum is going to be better for most people because we can go back and forth on your topics. You can post pictures, that sort of thing. So, Okay, so, uh, and uh, as far as the forum goes, like I said, I'm there multiple times a day, and we've got some regulars there that help us out a lot. And I just want to mention uh, Ace, Bruce, Aaron, Wayne, Clarence, Dan, and everybody else who helps us out there. Um, we really appreciate it though. Some of those people are there as much as I am or more. So, and uh, they're all either retired, retired trades or they're maybe in the trade or they're just really handy at uh, what they're doing. And we've really become uh, trustworthy of their advice that they're helping us you know. So, um, so that's kind of 2019 great year. Love it. I'm glad that everybody was able to, uh, to uh, keep, you know, follow along with us and keep up with us. And uh, these live chats are something new for us. So uh, I think we're, you're going to see more of them here in 2020. And as far as 2020 goes, uh, just to touch on a few points, we have many videos planned for this year. Uh, we plan to release 30 throughout uh, all the weeks of the year. Um, we try to stay on a re fairly regular release uh, schedule, but uh, we're kind of, we're going to kind of steer away from that usually at the beginning of the year and then get quite a few more, uh, Quite a few more in uh, towards the end of the year, but we always shoot for getting out just as much content as, as we possibly can. So, um, and vlogs as well. I think that's something else we're going to keep doing. So, um, we're going to, as far as videos, we're going to have some more tool videos and uh, DIY friendly, you know, how to do whatever, like like you're used to seeing from us, and as well as these live chats. So, I think we're all good. Um, Everybody seems to be liking what we're doing. We don't want to change things up too much all at once. So kind of throwing in the live chats this year just to, to uh, see how it goes. Um, the vlog went over well, so that's going to continue. And uh, if you have any video suggestions, you can always uh, post them in the comments below this and we'll be sure to have a look at those. Uh, we, we tend to get, uh, we tend to get uh, quite a few people putting suggestions in here. So, uh, so I'm going to just kind of have a look here again. So we've got, uh, Brandon Sarson, my boss has me doing siding at minus 10 Celsius, not smart. Well, if it's vinyl siding, uh, I'm sure you're being really careful because it's one slip of the hammer and you're breaking something. So, uh, I'm not your boss, so I can't tell you to stop. You got to do what the man says, right? Or the lady, <laughs> uh, Amanda Bruni. I thank you for your videos. I began building my own house and I've learned so much from you. Awesome, Amanda. I'm glad that uh, we can help you out and good luck with your house. Uh, Jeff reviews for you. Love your channel. Awesome, Jeff. Thank you. Glad uh, everybody's loving things. Uh, Benita Hill, your videos have helped me so much. You're welcome, uh, Benita. Uh, Computer Noob 66. I think you were on on our other live chat. I, that kind of rings a bell, or else I've seen it on comments on the videos. What did you say? What percentage of your week is spent in content? As far as building content, uh, we were kind of sporadic because uh, me and the rest of the crew here, we all work full-time jobs as well. So we tend to like binge on it, get our content figured out so we can get our next videos lined up and shoot some videos. And uh, But uh, if you're talking content as far as looking after the forum and that, 
I don't know, that's a few hours every day out of my day just spent uh, doing that sort of stuff, checking comments, all that kind of thing. So um, <laughs> the other thing to mention, like something like YouTube like this, this is seven days a week, 365 days a year. Like I don't get weekends off as far as that goes. I'm always checking comments. I'm always on the forum, uh, making sure that we aren't being spammed, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's kind of one of those jobs that it's always there. And now with phones in your back pocket, you can't. It's handy, but you can't get away from it. So uh, who else we got? Molly Mc McDonald. How do you have time for all of this? That's a very good question, Molly. And uh, I think what I just spurted out here a couple minutes ago answers a lot of it. It's a hectic time. Uh, David Mollard. Hey, love the channel. Like to see more uh, kind of like to see more kind of came in late to this. Hello from St. I'm assuming that's supposed to be St. Louis, but uh, hi, David. Uh, super sup one per week please <laughs> I you know that would be difficult honestly I'm gonna say I don't know if we can do one per week there's gonna be times in the year where we can do that but for us to shoot uh, like basically 52 videos in a year uh, that that's I don't know if that's gonna come anytime really soon but it's a great idea if we can do it we'll try but uh, it's not gonna happen real soon Char B, I recognize that name. So she, I believe, is a big Facebook fan of ours. Yes, the blog was great. Hi, Char. Glad to see you here at the live chat. I think you missed the other one, if I remember your comment correctly. Uh, Tiger Chapacino13. Sorry, I'm not sure if I got that all right. The bathroom videos were great. I learned a lot. Thanks. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, where are we at now? Uh, that screen kind of jumped through a bit. Uh, Rule Velasco, hello. Can you do one supporting? Can you do one on supporting and raising a sinking house using the lolly column and how to support the existing joist? That is probably a video we are not going to do. That is that is something that you should be discussing with the engineer and getting uh, engineer drawings and everything. I'm sorry, that that's probably not a video that we're going to put up for DIYers. It's a little too complicated. Uh, Jason May, I still suck at drywall. Not not my fault, he says, but you are always very helpful. Well, Jason, drywall is one of those things, the mudding of drywall, it, it just takes time and some practice. And usually by the time you've done your project, you're getting good at it. By the time you go to do it again, you need that little bit of practice again to get nimble at it. Even myself, because I don't do drywall every day. So, uh, Sean Hoffman, awesome videos you have been uh, you have helped me a great deal. Love all the videos. Thanks, Sean. I'm glad you like what we have. Um, now, I think I think we pretty much looked after the uh, the 2019 year in review and the two, what we're going to do in 2020. So uh, I just want to just kind of wrap that up and just thank all of our supporters. Uh, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for you guys um, watching and liking our videos and the patrons and. We get uh, donations through PayPal, all that kind of stuff. All that stuff is what makes this work and allows us to be able to, to do it and produce the content and get it up there and just keep the wheels turning. So thank you very much. Um, so like I said, this is kind of our first official live chat and uh, I think it's going pretty good. We're at about 127 people tuning in right now. So uh, we're pretty good and we're, I don't know, I think that's, I think this is telling me we've been up and going for close to 20 minutes, so so that's good. Uh, so we've got lots of people tuning in. Um, we've got Terry L. I build my own doghouse for when my wife kicks me out. Yeah, that's a video we should maybe do. The man's doghouse. That might be an idea. Slim Denver, thanks a lot for everything. You're welcome, Slim. Uh, Guillermo Gonzalez. I probably screwed your first name up. Sorry about that. Good vi videos. Thanks a lot. Uh, computer noob 66 we talked to you earlier you're welcome uh, where are we Wallace Wallace Ev I was able to vinyl side my entire house by watching your videos we've got so many vinyl siding related videos up but that doesn't surprise me I, and I'm glad that you were able to uh, use them and uh, get your entire house done so uh, T man NC hey Shannon Learned a lot from watching your videos. Thanks for sharing your expertise. And he's got two big thumbs up there. So you're welcome, uh, 
T-Man. Rick84, you're awesome. Installed an entry door in back of my garage with your tips and advice. That's good, Rick. Hope it opens and closes. And uh, if it does, then you did a good job. And we, I guess we talked you all right. <coughs> you know, I, you guys know me in my videos. I do a lot of chatting, but uh, I get a really dry throat <laughs> doing this because uh, it's just nonstop. Too. Um, and before anybody asks, no, this is just water. So. I think somebody asked on the last live chat. Uh, so I'm just going down the list here looking for, uh, we got Super Funky, Sun God, we got Moxie Music, we got Dan, we got lots of people tuning in here. We got Hammer Time. Do you have any garage builds this year? So in 2020, well Dan, we're going to actually have a garage blog. I built a garage in 2019. If you, if you actually watched the live chat last week, I kind of went into this a little bit, but I'll, I'll do the condensed version. Garages in a city are really hard for us to shoot videos on. There's just so many factors, uh, neighbors, dogs, neighbors, lawnmowers. There's just so many things going on that we have to be careful of, of not invading people's privacy or them not interrupting what we're doing. We're looking for the exact right situation to be able to do it, and we just haven't found it yet, but we did do a vlog about that garage. So it still will give you some insight into sort of the process, but it's not, I don't have the how-to videos to go with it yet. So we're looking for the right situation to be able to do that. Uh, Go-kart, how to upgrade electrical panel from 75 amp to 125 amp. Uh, well, really that's honestly an electrician's job. Um, you shouldn't DIY that. So just the basics on that is gonna be if you only have a 75 amp panel, which is kind of an odd number, honestly, uh, that's a 75 amp panel. Something to check into before you go too crazy with it is your service might not even be big enough. So you might have to actually change the service, which is the lines coming to the house in order to upgrade to a hundred or a 200 amp panel. Uh, but that's definitely something you need to contact a, you need to contact an electrician for, and uh, they'll pull all the permits and they'll do it. That, that is not a DIY job. So. Thanks, go kart. Uh, we've got another uh, super chat. That's uh, Molly McDonald. Thanks, Molly. Appreciate that. She says, "Thanks for all the advice and videos. You're very welcome. Thank you for doing the super chat." Uh, we got White Lashes Daisy. My dad really appreciates them, and I'm assuming you're talking about my videos and not your White Lashes. <laughs> Thanks, White Lashes. I appreciate it. Uh, Kevin Tillich. Installed a sub panel in a basement for finishing a basement would also be a good video. Uh, that is something that a DIYer could do, and that might be something that we could look into. Um, typically, if you can at all, you're better off, in my opinion, to upgrade your original panel, if it makes sense, and make it big enough to do what you want to do. But a sub panel is another good way to go if you have the room to do it. So that might be something we can consider at some point. Thanks for the suggestion. Um, Rob Churchill, cheers from Chicago, from a patron supporter going to build a shed and know how, cheers from Chicago, from a patron supporter going to build a shed and know how to do it, thanks again. No problem, Rob, thanks for uh, joining us on Patreon, we appreciate that and good luck with your shed. Uh, Joseph G, Shannon, how do you attach rigid foam to a basement wall if it's not completely flat? I want to build a two by four wall in front of it. Okay, so some basement walls, you're going to have some uh, chunks of concrete sticking out from a hole in the forms, or you might have a, an actual tie rod sticking out or that sort of thing. Or maybe it was a strip form, like not four by eight sheets uh, used for the forms. It might have been like shiplap or whatever, so they get kind of wonky. Um, just knock off the big chunks. Like if it's concrete sticking out, like a, you know, a little circle of concrete or a row or something, just take a cold chisel and hammer throw your safety glasses on and just knock knock it off as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then uh, attach your foam up against that. So. Um, so Superior Being, great channel. Happy New Year from the UK. Hi. Happy New Year right back to you and Happy New Year to everybody else watching. Hope everybody had a good Christmas, good New Year's. Everybody was safe. Um, didn't get too out of control, I hope so. Me, I was pretty boring. I wife and I just stayed home after the hockey game and... and uh, we actually missed New Year's. It was 
about 10 minutes after 12 till we realized we kind of sat there watching our movie right through here. So we're boring. We're old. Uh, Casey Mack, late lap and plaster century home looking to update the, oops, I just jumped there. Uh, looking to update the poured concrete basement. What would you recommend? Um, well, I guess that depends. I, I don't know if, what you're asking. If, if you're asking whether you should stay time period correct for the rest of the house for what you're doing in the basement, uh, that's a bit of a tough call. I guess I've seen it go both ways. I, that's really a personal thing. From a resale side, if you're, if you're in a community or a street or a block where the homes are all like still 1910 or whatever and everything's in good shape, it's kind of nice to keep them uh, period correct, I, I think, but uh, that, that's really a personal call. I, I, I think that's what you're asking. I'm not sure I can really give you a definite answer on that. Uh, Jan 9th, 1977. Uh, thanks for the tips on projects. You're welcome. Uh, Casey Mack, rock wool and no barrier. Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about a basement and you're talking about rock wool insulation and not using a moisture barrier against the concrete. And that's perfectly accept acceptable with rock wool. Uh, that is one of the few insulations uh, besides spray foam or rigid foam that you can put directly on the concrete wall without any moisture or anything like that kind of affecting you. So, uh, so good question. No, uh, so my answer there is uh, you shouldn't need a moisture barrier. If your area requires a vapor barrier, you're still going to need that on the inside under the drywall. Uh, 4071 SBCT. How much should it cost to build a 20 by 24 shed? Boy, that's that's not even a shed anymore. That's a that's like a mid-sized garage, honestly. DIY rough price. Oh boy, that's that's really gonna. There's a lot of factors in there. One of which is where you live and what your costs, like your material costs, are. Uh, it varies greatly. Uh, I mean, I'm up here in Canada, so everything costs a fortune here, um, as far as building materials. And it also depends, are you going to put it on concrete or a wood floor? Uh, I don't know. That's going to, materials wise, again, I don't know, ballpark. Probably five, six thousand dollars $6,000. I don't know. It really, it, there's so many factors. It's, it's really hard. Lots of people ask in our videos, actually, about the cost of things or the cost of the project. Our shed build would be one. I think that build was $1,700 in materials, and that was our Canadian costs the materials uh, but it's really hard to say because things change so much from area to area so uh, and that shed uh sorry i'm just getting tips from the side here uh so that shed was uh six by eight i believe in our video and that was 1700 bucks so and that was on a wood floor uh let's get back to some names uh, blake evans i don't know how your ankles haven't snapped sitting on the ground for as long as you do uh -huh. Also, it scares me how you don't always wear shoes on projects. Haha, <laughs> be safe, man. You know what? Uh, I know the video you're talking about, about the shoes, because that's probably the one where we did the interior door install. And uh, yeah, I, I just didn't put shoes on that day. I forgot to bring some dry shoes to wear. So yeah, you, you're right. I need to wear shoes more often. Uh, what was his other part about that? Uh, scares me. Oh, that was my, how my ankles don't break, right? Yeah. And lots of people comment on that too. Apparently I sit goofy when I sit down on the floor with my feet underneath me and my ankles back. So uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's just what I do. And no, my ankles aren't great and my knees aren't great either. And maybe that's why. Uh, we've got another uh, super chat there from Rob Churchill. Thanks, Rob. Glad you're tuning in tonight. What's everybody think of this time? Uh, if we're going to do this a little more regular, I, I, we really haven't talked about it, but if we were, so this is this a good time for everybody? I mean, I realize the time zones change. Maybe we'll see some people comment back about that here uh, as far as time and, and even the day. We're, so we're, we pick Sunday. It's, it's 7 o'clock in the evening here where we are. Uh, so we're probably catching people. I'm just talking mostly North America. We're probably catching people at you know, anywhere from 5 to 9 sort of thing. So just let us know if you want. Just pop in there and let us know what you think about the time and the, and the day of the week. Excuse me. Uh, Rob Churchill, sorry, Siri misinterpreted. Okay, that's going back to Rob on the super chat. I noticed his message was retracted is what it says. So he must have put something in there and Siri misunderstood him and 
put something in he didn't want to say or was mixed up so he's he's retracted that but uh it's no big deal uh rob if you want to put it in the other comments go right ahead we'll try to catch up if we catch your name here again so uh so we got sledge do you recommend silicone in upstairs tiled shower in the base instead of grout for movement yes between the shower pan and the wall whether it's i don't know if you said it's yeah it's tiled i would definitely recommend silicone because you're you're going to have movement in that joint and uh, silicone is at least hopefully going to give you the movement you need without cracking where grout is likely going to crack so good question uh, MP Marvin 999 thanks for the great knowledge going to be using your vids to do first floor powder room gutting and doing total reno your vids gives confidence thanks hey no problem Marvin I hope that uh, your powder room turns out good uh, Mo Lester peace from Calgary hey another uh, Canadian how's Calgary I think you guys got a whole shot of snow here the other day at least I seen a bunch of trucks with snow dropping on the highway coming through town here so um, uh, we got uh, David McDonald, uh, Super Chat. Let's see what he has to say. Thanks for the roofing bid. I'll be using it this spring on a 1,000 square foot home I inherited. Ooh, inherited a house. That's awesome. 1,000 square feet. That's a nice size, too. That's about the size of the house that we uh, did in the video. So um, you're welcome, Dave, and thanks for the Super Chat. Uh, Rob Churchill's back. Another Super Chat. Thanks, Rob. We appreciate that. Dave and Rob, awesome. Uh, so he's looks like he's got his comment here. So... Here's a down payment on how to how to garage videos. Ha ha. Not just blog. blog uh, he has blogs, but it was blogs that we did. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. That's uh, that's a good start to us uh, finding the right project to uh, to do the garage build on. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Jeremy Hatcher. Love watching your videos. Extremely informative and educational. I found my I find myself watching your videos even when I don't have a project, but just for fun. I hope everybody does, honestly. Um, if you're a subscriber, I, I do hope that you're going to watch the videos because uh, you might not have that project going on right now, but you might know somebody that has it coming up or it might give you an idea of something you can do in your house. So yeah, no, I, I'm glad that, that you're watching them even if you don't think you need them, so. Uh, another super chat, Hamed Alajud, Alajud, sorry, Hamed, I, I probably messed that up big time, but uh, appreciate the super chat. Thanks for coming in and checking out the chat. So, um, what do we got? We got we got hammer time. How did you start doing YouTube? Well, we started out with a website. I, I touched on this on the live last last live chat as well. But uh, we started out with actually houseimprovements.com, the website. I was going to write articles for it. We were going to have the forum, and we did start that way. We did that for probably maybe close to a year. I'm not sure anymore. Uh, I was writing articles. Uh, I'm a carpenter. I'm honestly not a writer. I know how to get it from my brain to my hands, but to get it from my brain to paper is not that easy for me. So, so I struggled with writing and I could see it wasn't something I was going to enjoy as far as a long-term thing, but yet I still wanted to help people. So then I looked at my partner, we're having a meeting one day and I said, look, I'm, I'm, having trouble here either we're gonna have to hire these out uh as far as the uh the writing goes for the articles how-to articles or we're gonna have to do something different and i said you know i I've, I've always learned well by watching people do it and doing things myself kind of on the job training sort of thing so that gave us the idea to to try some videos and uh, our first two videos were drywall related and uh they just went over phenomenally well uh, just shocked us actually and it was it just it came pretty natural to me I, i'm not sure why uh to just stand there and talk well you, know, you guys all know i can talk but just to stand there and, and show you what to do it just came out it came fairly natural to me and i i think a lot of you get it and you understand me and you know that um you know we miss the odd thing but we we get a lot more than most people do in our diy videos so that's that's kind of how it all started uh so our first video went up I believe I remember it was August 2010. Uh, I think I actually remember that date. But uh, so that's how long we've been doing it. And uh, now we have a look back. Uh, what do we have? We we're, must be closing in on 300 videos, I think, that we've got posted up. So. Uh, okay, so I've got a bunch highlighted here to, to touch on. So we got uh, Sam Henke, works for me. 
Oh, the time. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the time and the date and everything. Okay, awesome. Uh, looks like maybe all these are, are about that. So Terry L, time is great. Uh, he's from Ontario, Ottawa, Ontario. So that's good. So looks like people are liking it. Amanda Bruni, yes, the time is good for me. Uh, Moxie Music, I seen your name earlier. I don't know if I mentioned it. Great day and time. Perfect. Billy Garfield, Sunday the 5th, yeah. Oh, 5.30, he's saying. Or maybe that's where he is. But anyways, uh, looks like it's working for uh, Billy as well. Kevin Tillich, uh, time is good in Utah. Perfect. Kevin Quinn, works for me. <laughs> Here we go. We got MP Marvin 999. Remember NFL playoffs Sunday. Okay, that is one thing I, I don't think we took into consideration. Uh, I don't know if I should say it live. I'm not an NFL watcher, so I didn't even think of that. Uh, yeah, shocking, right? Uh, CFL, yes. NFL, I just, there's too many games, too many teams. I can't keep track. I don't have time. But that is something for us to consider for sure. We're going to have to look at that. Um, Rob Churchill, perfect time just driving home from my cabin up north and listening a while in while I drive and send you money. Haha. <laughs> awesome, Rob. Keep sending it. <laughs> drive safe, though. Um, Mr. Mr. and more Mr. <laughs> hey, I made it. Yay. Oh, well, we're glad that you made it. I assume you're talking about you got tuned into the live chat here. It looks like we got 137 people, so we're, we're doing pretty good. I don't remember what we got up to the other day, but uh, I, I was shocked. Um, if, you, if you tuned in on the last live chat we did, Literally, we did not promote it. No, none of you knew anything about it other than all of a sudden you probably got a notification, those of you who are uh, subscribed and have your notifications turned on. So we had a big turnout that we just, we didn't know if we'd have anybody. <laughs> so that was good. Maybe we should touch on that. Uh, just in case we've got people that came in from Facebook or Twitter or uh, Patreon or whatever. If you don't, or maybe you're subscribed to us, uh, but you don't have your notifications turned on for our channel. If you do that, uh, we'll try to put up a notification that when we're going to go live. So you will get that a couple days ahead of when we do, and I'll show you the time and everything. So click the little bell icon. If you're subscribed to us already and you're watching one of our videos or on our channel, where subscribe used to be, you'll see a little bell. Just click that, and it'll give you some options. And, uh, yeah, anyways, that's probably the easiest way to keep up to date with us. Uh, so... Gil C, parents' wall tile next to stove is starting to bubble. Oh, and then he's right underneath there again. What do I do? Okay, so I'm assuming it's some kind of ceramic tile or something like that. Chances are the glue or maybe the drywall underneath has let go with some moisture or something. So there's not much more you can do other than if it's really bad and you want to want to fix it up, you're going to have to pull that off. The problem with that is you might not ever find that tile again. You might not be able to reuse the tile that you've got. So it's kind of a tricky thing. If, if you're going to mess with it, be prepared that you may have to pull everything off and do new tile or do some kind of pattern to, to cover up that area. So basically, basically it's just let go for, for whatever reason on the back. And uh, yeah, you're probably going to have to deal with it at some point. Uh, Liam Ahair. Hey, Shannon, thanks for all your help. You're welcome, Liam. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Frank Picard, uh, hello, Shannon. Hi, Frank. Terry L., I voted house improvements over Mike Holmes. Or I vote house improvements over Mike Holmes. Awesome. Another great Canadian, Mike Holmes, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you're watching us. Uh, I don't know what he does anymore. I just don't see him around much, but uh, not that I personally know him. But, uh, LB, I'm in Toronto finishing my basement. If I install two inch XPS rigid insulation against the block foundation, frame it and add pink fiberglass insulation in the stud bays, do I need a vapor barrier? Uh, with two inch XPS rigid foam, you need to really check with your local inspectors to be sure because some, some places are allowing you if you use two inch not to use the vapor barrier if it's two inch foam and it's sealed well. So, and other areas aren't. So that's something you definitely need to check with your uh, local, uh, whoever does your permits for, uh, where were you, Toronto, I think? Yeah. So whatever area of Toronto you're in, whoever looks after your permitting, you're definitely going to have to ask them. It, and, and you should anyways, uh, to get the permit, they're going to want to know what you're doing. So, uh, go-kart. I have Busman Fuse Panel. Busman, that must be a brand. I honestly haven't heard of it. 
is it dangerous? And also, if panel upgraded doesn't, and also if panel upgraded, does the existing electrical wiring need to be upgraded to three wire instead of two wire? Uh, that is probably going to depend again on your local codes. Um, it'd be a really good idea, honestly. Uh, wiring without a ground is not super safe. Some areas I think are going to ask you to upgrade everything, which is obviously going to be pretty costly. So uh, that's something that, again, an, an inspector or your local branch that issues permits can uh, help you out with. So, um, Sam Henke, play, playoffs are over today. So I'm thinking you're talking NFL. So that's good to know. J.H. Hawks. Uh, we've got another super chat from David McDonald. Uh, sliding glass install install concrete threshold not level okay so you've got some sliding glass doors i assume uh, you must be in a slab home or something and they don't have the threshold level uh yeah that's that's a bit of a problem you're gonna have a little bit of leeway in the sliding glass doors they're gonna have a little bit of adjustment so depending how much out of level it is it's hard to say so i'm not i'm not, not so, sorry i'm not sure david if you're asking what to do to install it when the threshold isn't level or if you're saying it's already installed and it's not level. So, but the, the rollers and, and stuff should have some adjustment. Um, if, if you're wanting to install it and the threshold isn't level, depending how much it is out, if it's outside of the parameters of what the hardware will adjust for, then you may have to actually uh, pour a new threshold uh, surface so that you can put the, the doors in. Thanks, David, for the super chat, though. Uh, GH, I did my weather strip twice. Thanks for the bid. Okay, so that must have been on uh, an exterior door. We did a video on uh, just simply pulling out the existing factory weather stripping, putting in a new piece. Pretty easy thing to do, but a lot of people didn't understand that they could actually do that. So, uh, Marvin9999, not NFL watcher. I'm shocked. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, sorry, Marvin. I'm up in Canada, and not that NFL isn't up. Here and there's tons of people up here to watch it. I, I just personally don't have the time. I'm a hockey fan too, and I don't even really follow the NHL that close because there's just too many games and teams, and I personally don't have that much personal time. I'm always on the forum or on YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, who else we got? We've got uh, Fraser Morrison. A suggestion for a future video would be to how to remove carpet on stairs and install new treads. Well, Fraser, uh, we actually were, the removing carpet on stairs is something we're gonna shoot here really soon. I don't know exactly when it will be released, but that is definitely coming up and you're gonna see it. Uh, what was, that was, what was it adding? And install new treads. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why you need to install new treads. So they should be in decent shape on, under the carpet, unless you're meaning to install hardwood. And we actually do have a hardwood installation video for, for stairs. So check that out on our channel. Um, I kind of got uh, my guy on the side here. He's he's trying to go through your guys' list there and uh, picking up on stuff that I'm probably going to miss if, if he doesn't. So ID Kachum, Kachum, I'm not sure how to say that. Why don't you post the videos for the bathroom you upgraded? We absolutely have. In fact, for almost all of 2019, that's the, most of the videos that you've seen was all on that bathroom. So the bathroom that you've seen in our blog, uh, any bathroom related video we released in 2019 was actually in that exact room. So we did 18 videos, I think, in that bathroom. I think there's only one yet to be released which is coming out here in January. Um, Ar Arcanus, Arkansas, sorry, Homestead, my favorite construction guy. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to be your favorite. <laughs> um, Mike Cohen of Colonial Concepts and Designs. Oh, you're sneaky. You're getting an advertisement shot in there, Mike. Hey, Shan, do you ever deal with inspectors that do not know their products and or codes and what the specs for certain builds are? I find most of these people are looking at justifying their job. Thoughts? Um, 
honestly, I'm in a fairly small community here. Uh, so I, I no, I, I wouldn't say my the, the local inspectors here have big heads. I think that's what you're trying to say. They're trying to push their agenda or whatever. Mine aren't. Uh, I'm a pretty stick to the rules kind of guy. I've never had to really push an agenda on anybody as far as trying to convince them what I what I want to do is the right way to do it. And they're wrong. Um, but but there are times there's there's new products out all the time, and uh, it's hard for any of us to keep up on all of them and know all of them and know what works in, in our climates and stuff. So uh, I, I definitely think that happens, but uh, I, I haven't really seen much of it anyway. So, um, so I think uh, your answer there is there probably are some, I know there are some, uh, I haven't had any run-ins with that sort of thing. So uh, what have we got here? Kasakism? <laughs> I really messed that one up. Sorry about that. Uh, hi, Shannon. How do you deal with table saw fences and adjusting them to be perfectly straight for cuts? So that, that's something we should really do a video on. I think it's actually on in our list, big, huge master plan of videos to do. We just haven't done it yet. But adjusting your fence on your table saw to cut straight, it's honestly, for most table saws, it's about adjusting the fence straight to the blade. Uh, there's probably a, honestly a way to adjust your blade straight to the guides on the fence or on the table saw top. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think there is. But what I always do on mine anyways, is I adjust the fence straight to the, the blade itself. And that way I know those two things are running parallel. Um, so depending on your saw, depending on your fence, some are adjustable, some are, most should have some kind of adjustments on them. If it's really old, it could just be getting wore out. Like there could be some replacement parts you need or whatever, but, but uh, basically that's what you want to do is you want to adjust your fence straight to the blade. And if anything, I like to open the back of my fence. So there's just a little bit more, just like a 30 second extra space at the back side of the blade as there is to the front. And that'll just help with uh, stopping some of the binding. Uh, so Robert uh, Rod Rodriguez, hello Shannon. I just replaced in a staircase, thanks to your video, very handy. Uh, so I'm assuming maybe flooring. Uh, I'm trying to read between the lines there, uh, Robert, but I'm glad that uh, you were able to get your flooring done on your stairs. Uh, Rob Churchill, referring to the spray foam video, have you ever had to go terrible? Um, I think what you're asking is, have I ever had spray foam go terribly wrong? And then he says, I've seen pretty catastrophic videos where they had to basically rip the house apart to get rid of it as it became hazardous. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I haven't had that problem, but I haven't done a lot of spray foam either. Uh, if it's a bigger job, I usually have a company come in. Um, it, it can be a tricky thing, especially in the DIY packs when you're using a two, two component spray foam. Uh, I've had problems with that where the two components don't mix right and you've got to cut it out and uh, redo it or whatever. So yeah, it can be a little tricky. Uh, there's no doubt about it, but I know what you're talking about. There's a lot of cases where spray foam is making the house unsafe basically. And people have had to have like a whole house of spray foam removed. I don't know all the information on those cases, but I know it does happen. Uh, I don't think it happens uh, as often as maybe people think, but you, all you need is a few people freaking out about it. And it sense panic in the world so uh, overall I think closed cell two component spray foam is still a good product so uh, Google Google pa five wow some of these people have some crazy handles uh, so what should I do to put my to put some plastic base so it doesn't leak on my bathroom downstairs like I want to put Uh, so I, I'm thinking what you're asking is what should you put on your shower base so it doesn't leak? Um, I don't know what you have now that's leaking, but it's obviously failed. Uh, maybe you have a tile tile base in your shower and it's it's leaking through and uh, into the basement or whatever. Basically, you got to rip that up. There's nothing you can put over it to uh, to fix that. So um, I, I'm not a big fan of tile shower floors. Um, I'm more of a fan of shower bases and tile walls. I think you have way less problems with those. 
okay, you're back in. I have tiles on, on the bathroom shower floor and I want to put some kind of plastic on it. How should I do it? Okay, so yeah, so I was right. That's what you're talking about. I don't know of anything you can put on there that's going to work long term, honestly. Uh, yeah, there, there's nothing that I know of that you can just spray on there that's going to magically seal that up. So sorry, I wish wish there was. I could probably make a bazillion dollars if I sold that. Uh, Theater M, Shannon, big fan of your tutorials slash videos. Please keep them coming. Anytime I do anything housework, Housework, my girlfriend always asks if I watched and how any how to's by Shannon. So your girlfriend is very smart. She knows the channel you should be going to to watch. So thanks, Theodore. Say hi to your girlfriend. Um, we've got uh, Calderwood222. Hi from Australia. Hey, down under. I've got a rusted galvanized drain pipe. I want to cut the top 200 mils off and put a plastic push down U bend on galvanized drain pipe. Uh, so I'm assuming this is a, uh, probably a sink. Um, I hope there's no fires in your backyard, by the way, uh, all of Australia is burning still. And, uh, I really hope that you're safe. Um, Calder, uh, I, I'm not sure what you're, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Sorry. Um, Sorry, I don't know if I can help you. Come to the forum. We can talk better there, and you can actually uh, post a picture, and I can see exactly what your situation is. So, sorry, I couldn't help you right here. Uh, Kelber Futinus, Futinus. Hey, I like your vinyl flooring video. Right on. That was a uh, that's a few years old, but it's all still pertinent information. So, uh, how are we doing here? So we're going on here about. 50 minutes. We've got 128 people. We're, we're still moving along pretty good. There's tons of questions. Um, I think, I think the basic gist of what we got earlier was people for the most part, kind of like this time. I'm not saying we're married to it yet or anything, but it sounds like people are kind of liking what we have going on here. Um, so that this is a discussion we're going to have to have and see how many more of these live chats we do and how often we do them. But it's kind of fun sitting here and answering these questions and talking to you guys and and uh, just seeing, uh, you're probably all laughing at me trying to pronounce all these names. There's no doubt some of you, that's probably, uh, your sides are probably hurting by now. Uh, but so far we've had some really good questions. Uh, we've had people from, well, a lot from North America, Canada, U.S., States, uh, or Australia, I mean. Um, yeah, we've got lots of different people tuning in. We had uh, quite a few over overseas ones there in the first video chat. I haven't noticed any of them here, but they, you guys might be here again today. I'm not sure. Um, so we've got uh, Herwin Rod Rodriguez, Rod Rodriguez, sorry. <laughs> hey, Shannon, what is the best way to put a post and don't rot for a deck? Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking a post in the ground. Um, personally, I'm, I'm not a big fan of support posts in the ground. Um, I would be more apt to put a concrete base in the ground, whether it be a you know, little frost line. I don't know what your what your climate is, but I would, I'd be more wanting to put a, uh, oh, here we go. You're from Guatemala. <laughs> okay, so I definitely don't know exactly what your ground conditions are there. Um, what I would do here is a concrete base with the post sitting on top of that because it gets it up out of the moisture, out of the ground and keeps it from rotting. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you have down there, uh, Herwin, as far as uh, cedar posts. That would be a good product to put in the ground, pressure treated posts. Uh, some people like to put a post in the ground and tamp it with crushed rock so that water can drain away from it easier. Uh, so hopefully that helps you out. Uh, Guatemala, awesome. Uh, Rob Churchill. Another super chat. Uh, here's another down payment. It's the concrete slab series of how to videos that you're going to do, right? <laughs> you know what? Concrete is one of those things I actually don't really do. If it's a sidewalk or a small slab or something, I'll do it. Um, I'm just not that practiced at it. I don't, I've never done it enough to get good at it. So that's one of those things I usually hire out to be real honest. Uh, if it needs a broom finish, 
yeah, not a problem. If I've got to sit there and trial it at the right time and, and everything, uh, I'm probably not your man. So unfortunately, even if we do a garage video, I'll almost guarantee that the slab will be subbed out and uh, be there for us to start on. So I uh, don't mean to burst your bubble and uh, I do appreciate the super chat. <laughs> Hopefully you can't retract that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so probably we won't, you probably won't see a lot of concrete stuff from us, uh, especially on a big slab or something like that. Sorry. Uh, James Dewis. Hey Shannon, can you please give me a shout out? Shout out to James. I really worry about, I don't know, sorry. The screen keeps jumping and then when I'm reading, I uh, get mixed up. So so he's he wanted the shout out. Shout out to James. Uh, love your videos. Keep up the good work. Well, thanks, James. I really appreciate you tuning in. And I appreciate your comment as well. And I hope the, the shout out was good enough. Uh, how about a high fives? Let's go, James. There we go. Uh, so then we got Jeremy Block. A two-wire cloth type wiring. Safer? Or should I really worry about it? Older home. Uh, I'm assuming that's in Minnesota. Is the abbreviation. Two wire cloth type wiring. Cloth type wiring, uh, that's typically from about the 40s, 50s, maybe late, early 60s. Um, first off, I'm not a fan of two wire. I, I really would like to see the ground in there. But if it's uh, not, the circuit isn't getting overheated, it's actually pretty safe. Uh, the problem with a lot of these older homes, they didn't run a lot of circuits, so you got a lot of things all in one circuit. If you're tending to run a lot of, uh, high uh, draw appliances like electric heaters, that sort of things all on circuit, it can overheat those wires. And that, that's where the safety problem comes in. So is it safe? There's a limit to its safety. Let's put it that way. So don't overload those circuits. Let's just, let's leave it at that. <laughs> uh, Clever Footness, Footness. Uh, hey, can you put a, put, can you put vinyl on concrete subfloor? Vinyl flooring, yeah, absolutely. Yes, uh, no, just a matter of uh, uh, prepping it up. And uh, yeah, no, it's you glue it down almost just like wood. Just use the correct glue. Uh, Rob Churchill, no problem. It's only money. <laughs> That's in re reference to his uh, super chat a few minutes ago asking about uh, concrete. So it's, it's been a good chat with you, Rob. Uh, Hammer Time. I think, I think we talked to Hammer Time earlier. Are you supposed to use a vapor barrier with rock wall insulation or is that the reason you use rock wall insulation so you don't have to use a vapor barrier? Okay, so you might have had the question earlier about rock, rock, uh, rock soil and uh, moisture barrier, I think is how I answered your last one. Um, rock wall insulation does not allow you to get away with not using vapor barrier. If your area, your jurisdiction jurisdiction requires a vapor barrier you need it uh, but only thing if your jurisdiction requires a vapor barrier that you can use for insulation that will allow you not to use a poly plastic vapor barrier it would be closed cell spray foam generally at least two inches so hopefully that answered your question better this time uh, Drake is this Drake the music dude I doubt it <laughs> What would you recommend for exterior bedroom wall insulation, sound and temp control? Should I have a company blow in insulation or is, or is it better, easier to replace drywall and fill as a DIY project? Um, so blow in insulation, like the fiber insulation where they drill a hole in your wall and they basically just fill the stud cavity. Um, it's not always the best because if there's anything in the wall, like blocking, fire blocking, wires, that sort of thing, sometimes the insulation can get hung up on that and it doesn't fully fill the wall, entire wall cavity. So you don't always get a complete perfect fill in every cavity. And generally the other problem with it is it settles over time. So eventually you'll have a space, you know, maybe the top two inches of your wall cavity actually won't have insulation. It is, however, quicker than pulling your drywall off insulating, vapor barrier, and redoing the drywall, and, and cheaper. Uh, but I think you get a better job by removing the drywall. Uh, the other thing that gives you a chance to do is inspect your wiring. Um, do a good vapor barrier, because in most homes before, let's face it, probably 2000, vapor barriers are pretty crappy. So uh, overall, it'll give you a better product, I think, by pulling the drywall and putting in bad insulation or spray foam. 
Uh, John Dole. I want to start my architecture building career. Where should I start as far as taking classes? What classes should I take? I want to build houses. Okay, so you want to build houses, like physically be the carpenter building houses or have a company who's building houses. Um, uh, personally, I would start at a trade school. Uh, you need to know the, the trade. Um, there's lots of builders out there that aren't, car aren't journeymen or even apprentice carpenters, and I'm not saying they're bad, but if you, it'll add to your credibility if you're a journeyman carpenter. And uh, I wouldn't say just go to school, get your ticket and open a company. Uh, you're obviously gonna have to work an apprentice for somebody and learn a lot, a lot of things on the job, which is the best way to do it as far as I'm concerned. So I, I personally think a trade school is the way to start. Uh, H King, hi Shannon, do you have any videos on crawl space? Uh, in, you have installation, I'm assuming you probably mean insulation. Uh, no, nothing specific to crawl spaces. Um, my area, we do have crawl spaces and they're done generally a couple different ways. They're either a ventilated crawl, crawl space or a sealed insulated heated crawl space. So uh, no, the answer is no. I don't have a video on, on anything on crawl spaces at this point. Uh, seat sniffer, <laughs> how become a subcontractor? Uh, you're asking how you can become a subcontractor? Uh, generally it's just, you might have to bid on jobs. You might have to approach general contractors in your area to see if they're looking for people to do whatever it is you do. I don't know if you're a sheet metal guy or <coughs> drywall or whatever you are. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, just you just got to put yourself out there. Uh, where are we at? Mike uh, Donchiff. If I have a vapor barrier under the siding, do I need one behind the drywall? Canada Gold. Yeah, our Canada Junior hockey team won goal today. They absolutely did. Tough game, but it uh, was a good game. Um, so, Mike, so what you have under your siding isn't a vapor barrier. What you're going to have under your siding is a house wrap. And house wrap and vapor barriers are two totally different things. So, if you're in Canada, yes, you need a vapor barrier. So, the vapor barrier is what you're going to have on the inside of the home under the drywall, as far as like a poly vapor barrier. Uh, so vapor barriers, to simplify it, go on the warm side of exterior walls or ceilings, okay? House wrap goes on the outside of your home over the whatever kind of sheetings on the outside of your house before the siding, stucco, steel, whatever goes on the outside. So, so your question is, you have basically a house wrap on the outside. Do you need a vapor barrier inside? Yes, you do. If you're in Canada, you need a vapor barrier. Uh, Char B. Hi, Char. Uh, my next challenge, what do you recommend for removing old tile adhesive from a concrete slab uh, floor? Okay, that can be tile adhesive. So, I don't know if you're talking mortar or if you're talking like some type of a glue. Either way, you're going to have to scrape it off. It's not going to come off easy. Um, if it's mortar, uh, probably the easiest way is to get like a small chipping hammer or a, like a small little jackhammer with a wide chisel bit on the end and you just kind of put it down on an end chisel bit on the floor and just kind of scrape along I think we actually did that in a video it was on a wood floor but uh, but it'll work on concrete as well if it's a glue you might have to use like a ra big razor scraper or possibly even some kind of uh, chemical to actually get it to release and get off it and again, it depends a little bit on what you're putting down afterwards, like how smooth you need it to be. So um, good question, though, Char. Char. Uh, MP Marvin 99 Man, your answer to Drake's question just made my powder room reno just get harder. I guess I'm ripping drywall. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that must have been the one about whether to blow in insulation in, in the cavities or uh, use bad insulation in that. Yeah, I, I would honestly use bad insulation. That's, that's the way I would go. I know it's all more work and mess, but. So we've got two posts here from Riley H. And I'm assuming they're in some kind of order. So let's let's start with the first one. I own a three-story 1930s 
single flat house, Sim single family home. Okay. Getting some help from the sidelines. Uh, has a bad foundation, retaining wall, porch, and garage. It has a new deck that wasn't done the best. Same, same without fence. Relatively updated inside. I'd like to rent, but all. Oh boy, I'm getting a little lost on your thing here, Riley. I'd like to rent, but with all bad with the house, is it better to sell? Knocking down and rebuilding might be a possibility with a smaller budget. Yeah, you got a lot of problems going on there. Uh, foundation problems can be very costly to fix, but they sometimes can be fixable. I think what you need to do is actually call in a professional, foundation professional or an engineer, and to get some quotes, get some actual real dollar figures to see, you know, estimated what the cost is going to be. So you can sit down and see what your budget is. Is it worth lifting the house, redoing the foundation, setting it back down, or... Is it better to sell it the way it is and just walk away or build new? Uh, yeah, I, I would get a professional in and get, get some costs going so you know you know really what it's going to be. Uh, clever Fuance? Fuance? I'm not sure how to say that. Clever. How about in the United States? Do you need a vapor barrier? Um, in the U.S., there's so many different climate zones you've got. Uh, I'm going to say if you're in Alaska... Yes. If you're in Hawaii, Florida, Texas, Arizona, I'm thinking not. Probably not in California either. Uh, best way to honestly know is to check your uh, with your local uh, building department, like your whoever signs out the permits or signs off on the permits to see for sure. Um, it really depends on your on your climate. Uh, I would say the northern third or half for sure do and Alaska for sure but I can't say exactly once you start getting down there or further out on the coast where your climates are a little more mild good question but you're best to check with your local office Jim Bob do you prefer vinyl siding or the newer hardy backer type of paintable siding um you know I've always been a fan of vinyl I know it, some people think it's just cheap garbage or whatever and it doesn't last blah 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 uh, the one thing I like about vinyl is it because it's cheap, you can redo it every 10 years. You get tired of the color, throw some new vinyl on, especially if you watch my videos and do it yourself. Uh, you can vinyl side an average house for a couple thousand bucks. So uh, it's relatively cheap compared to anything else. And uh, Hardy is expensive. You can do it yourself too, but it's expensive. And uh, um, I guess you can repaint it. That's cheap. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, a, I'm a more of a fan of uh, vinyl myself, honestly. Justin B, love your video, Shannon. Uh, when screwing anything from the outside of the house, should I put any sort of silicone around the hole? Uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, silicone, maybe no. Caulking would be better. Most caulkings, or at least use something that's paintable if you're on a painted surface. Uh, not a bad idea. Uh, is it done all the time? Not very often, but uh, it it wouldn't hurt for sure. Fraser Morrison. Hey, Fraser. Uh, under the piece of carpet I have already pulled up, there was some pieces of plywood for treads. I would like to have a hardwood tread instead. Okay, was Fraser the guy that was back with a similar question a while ago? Uh, so, Fraser, you can, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, I would probably just put by hardwood flooring, like we've got a video that shows how to do it, hardwood flooring and actually do the treads and the risers or whatever you want to do with actual hardwood. Um, you can also buy kind of some pre-made treads. Uh, they're usually plywood though, and they've got a, a small front on them to match uh, oak or maple or whatever you want. You can buy those uh, at all the big box stores pretty well. And you basically just have to cut them to size and plop them on and glue them down, but they're plywood. Problem with plywood is it's going to wear a lot quicker, um, unless you've got like a carpet runner on the stairs or something like that. The plywood veneer is going to wear through. Now it's going to take quite a few years, but uh, it will wear through. Okay, okay. So we've got Sam Henke. 
and I think he's telling me how to say uh, one of the other guys' names. So earlier we had uh, Kleber on there, and I, I don't know how I pronounced it before, but I guess it's Fuentes. So, okay, well, thanks to Sam. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, Kleber or what what the deal is, Sam, or you're just way better at figuring out names than I am. But. So sorry I messed that up, Kleber, before. That's Kleber Fuente. Fuentes. Sorry. <laughs> Um, hammer. Oh, sorry. So I'll just go to that because I started to say it's uh, hammer time. He's got here. Uh, what do you think of LP smart side or do you like the hardy plank? You know what? Uh, actually on my own house, I use the smart side, uh, corners, just the corners. I use vinyl siding, but I, I use their corners. I like the stuff. I think, I think it'll stand up pretty good. Uh, you can paint it. You can cut it. You can do whatever with it. But uh, yeah, I I haven't used the siding itself, but I've used the the corner trim. So uh, I like it. Um, you had another one highlighted there. Now I'm missing it, or you missed it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lorelai Johnson, Lorelee, Lorelai. It's so scrunched together, I can't tell. Um, great job, Shannon. Been watching for years. Got to get up at 5 a.m. So time to roll. Well, I appreciate you tuning in and watching and checking out what we had to say so far and uh but yeah i can understand if you got to get up that early it's off to bed for you jeremy block is a vapor barrier basically poly uh that is the most commonly used item around here other than like spray uh, close cell spray foam so it is a special poly it's not just heavy poly because poly comes in all the excuse me all different thicknesses it is specifically designed as a vapor barrier so it has a high perm rating, which means it doesn't let moisture through very easily or air. Uh, but it'll be, if you're looking for a poly to use for vapor barrier, because that's what you require, it needs to be stamped and actually says it's for uh, vapor barrier. Uh, there's, there's new ones out now too. They're called smart, smart barriers. And they actually, I don't know how the science works. I, that's not my job, but they will actually allow some breathing of that wall still depending on the house conditions and the humidity and stuff so it's something that i've been recommending uh because i think if it, if it actually works the way they say it i think it's actually probably what should be used all the time uh rick 84 do you recommend tearing down drywall installing backer board for an accent stack stone wall veneer stone or natural stone yeah i i'm not a big fan of putting stone even if it's, whether it's uh, like a veneer or man-made or natural, I wouldn't put it right on drywall. I would put it back board up, yeah. If you want to uh, overlap it a little bit onto the drywall so you don't have to do any taping or anything, you know, a couple inches, not a big deal, but the main part should be on uh, some kind of cement board product, in my opinion, or plywood. Uh, we've got another super chat. This one is from Jason Bick. Bayek, sorry. Sorry, Jason, if I said that wrong, but thanks for the super chat. And let's see what you had to say. Luxury vinyl versus hardwood flooring. Your thoughts. Well, hardwood flooring is beautiful. I'm kind of old school. I like hardwood, but it has a lot of drawbacks, especially the newer types of hardwood. Uh, the finishes just aren't as good. It marks easily. I don't know if they use cheaper woods now or what it is, but it, it marks easily. If you've got pets or kids or whatever, they're just going to hammer the crap out of that stuff and uh, you're not going to be happy over time. I, I've seen a house uh, and this is just one example. I've seen a house where they put in hardwoods to the whole main floor. I came back a year later and it looked terrible because of the dog. They had a big dog and he raced around and it wasn't, it wasn't like gout or it wasn't uh, marked. Like the finish wasn't scraped off, but you could see all the little uh, marks in it, like indentations from his claws and that. So, Luxury vinyl, you can get a lot that are really, really um, real looking as far as, you know, wood type patterns and that sort of stuff. And it's uh, quite a bit more durable than hardwood. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of, I kind of lean towards luxury vinyl just because it's a little more robust as far as uh, standing up to everyday life. So if you got a show home or a front room where nobody goes, <laughs> I don't know, do people still have those rooms? Uh, 
throw your hardwood in there. But uh, as far as your everyday run of the mill house, hardwood isn't as good as it used to be. Um, uh, MP Marvin 999. I think we talked to this gentleman a few times today. At what point do you need a retaining wall? 10 feet from the house property drops about four or five feet. Is this a potential problem? 10 feet from the house property drops four or five feet. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's just a straight drop off, you really should have something there because if you get a lot of moisture or free thaw cycles or whatever, that ground's going to start to shift because there's basically nothing there. If it, if it literally drops off, like, I think that's kind of what you said. That that's where it becomes a problem. If it kind of gradually makes its way down, not so much of a problem. But uh, I would think from what you said, it probably needs some type type of retaining wall. Uh, Thomas, question for you in a basement remodel: Can you put rigid foam board on painted foundation walls? It's older paint, so it's popping off in some places. Yeah, not a problem. Honestly, I'm not a fan of these painted things that people want to sell you to supposedly seal up your walls. If you've got a leaking basement wall, it really needs to be addressed from the outside. You need to dig up the exterior and fix it from outside, not put a Band-Aid on the inside because that ain't going to last. So answer your question, yep, throw the foam over it. But if there is leaks, you should address those. Uh, Mike uh, Donchev, one more question. What should I use for soffits on my gables, vented or just use solid? Um, Quite honestly, I use vented all the time. Uh, it just simplifies the process in my mind. Uh, you're buying one product. Uh, you're not having to buy vented and non-vented and figure out exactly, you know, how much of this do I need, how much of that. Less waste, less leftover stuff. So I, I do vented all the way up unless it's a situation where uh, in some areas you're encroaching on the uh, property property line and, and uh, they require a solid soffit in there. For fire code or something um, but otherwise i would just use vented if it's it's not going to hurt anything and if anything it, depending on how your gable is made it might actually help more ventilation so i i don't think vented is a problem uh oh boy we picked this guy again and now i've already <laughs> forgot how to say his last name fuentes claver fuentes i probably messed that up again uh why does plumbing contain lead on copper pipes. Um, so I think my, what you might be referring to is on copper pipe, uh, they can be soldered together using lead. Uh, so that would be where the lead content is, is in the joints. Um, yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know if I have an answer for you on that. But uh, if you're getting lead in your copper pipes, it may be from the solder. But that isn't saying that you don't have lead uh, pipes somewhere else in the home or maybe the supply line coming to your house is lead. Uh, that's very common and then copper from there. So uh, it's hard to say for sure. Char B, uh, I had vinyl plank in a room and it fools absolutely everybody. That is what I'm saying, Char. Yeah, a lot of these new uh, LVLs are just so, so realistic until somebody actually gets down on their hands and knees and touches it, they don't really even realize that it's it's not hardwood or, or tile even. Some of them are really good as far as the ones that look like ceramic tiles. So, yeah, good point, Char. Uh, Drake, luxury vinyl is shifting um, over time, so be careful when you install. So, yes, one thing with luxury vinyl, uh, it's very important that you climatize it long enough in your home. Uh, don't just pull it in the day before and throw it down. Like I'd bring it in a couple, three days or at least as long as the manufacturer says, if not longer, to climatize. And don't just pile it up in one big pile off in the corner. Uh, you know, spread it around a little bit. It needs to climatize. Um, the, other, the other thing with luxury vinyl is uh, people are having trouble if they put it in front of like garden doors or someplace where there's a lot of sunlight. Uh, because it is a vinyl product, it expands and contracts so much that... Uh, big fluctuations in heat and cold can uh, definitely start shifting it around. So it, yeah, that is a drawback of it. And also in those big sunlight areas, uh, some people are having trouble with it fading or uh, I think there's a different word to use, but basically the color is fading out in those areas where the sun shines all the time. So something to think about. 
uh, Sam Henke. I've had luxury vinyl kind of bubble up because the subfloor wasn't very level. You could feel it give when you walked in certain areas. Um, yeah, that's not the vinyl tile though problem. That's the subfloor not being cracked or maybe it got wet under there. It's hard to say exactly what that was. So it wasn't fastened down properly. Uh, so why call me Lord O oh Lord? Oh, oh, sorry, why call me Lord Lord? Uh, epoxy for countertops or not? Um, I think you're talking about the poured epoxy countertops where they do all the coloring and make it look like stone or whatever. I've never seen one hands on. They look good and there's endless amount of things that these creative people that do this sort of stuff can do with it. But uh, why call? Yeah. Okay. I did get it right. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Cost wise, I have no idea what it costs. I'm not sure if it's super DIY friendly. Um, so yeah, give it a sh give it a shot if you want to, or if you're having somebody come and do it. Charles Propes, what have you heard about your not? What have you heard about? You're not supposed to use coil stock on pressure treated lumber. Okay, apparently the chemicals in one of the products has adverse reaction. So if you use coil stock uh, over top, so we're talking metal over top of a pressure treated surface like plywood or uh, lumber or whatever, something pressure treated, you will get a chemical reaction that basically will eat out that metal over time. Um, I'm not sure if it's quite as severe as it used to be with the old cult copper sulfate type treatment that used in uh, pressure treated lumber. But yeah, it's, it's not a good idea to use uh, a coil stock over top of pressure treated. Uh, now I'm trying to think if aluminum's all right. Now you, you caught me off guard here. I can't remember if both react or one of the other is okay. Uh, I kind of forget, but yes, you're right. There is a reaction that can happen with one or both. I, I just forget exactly. Good question. Uh, so that was Charles that had that one. Uh, where are we at? There's Kleber again. Important when when you replaced your ceiling, do you have to spray ceiling texture? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, in my area, a lot of people are going away from textured ceilings. Textured ceilings. Honestly, I think probably were invented by lazy people because the textured ceiling is done, especially popcorn when we go back to the popcorn age, was done uh, really so that they could skip the amount of labor they had to put into getting a ceiling perfectly flat. Uh, so they sprayed this popcorn crud all over it and looked all bumpy and lumpy and nobody could tell that their joints were terrible. Uh, so yeah, I think it was basically basically invented by as, as far as popcorn and that sort of texture by people who just didn't want to take the time to work overhead and get it smooth. In my area here, most ceilings are smooth or a knockdown texture, which still does hide quite a bit. Uh, smooth ceiling though, it's, it takes a lot of work and it is harder to work overhead. So, uh, Sam Hankey, what is coil stock? So coil stock, what I was referring to there was uh, uh, like guys that have a break. A break is a a big table that people can bend up custom pieces of metal in for uh, like doing fascia or custom covering wooden window uh, exteriors uh, to make them look good again. Um, so the coil stock is the product they buy, the metal that comes in a big roll uh, that they use. They just roll it out, cut off the length they need, put it in their brake and they bend whatever profile they need out of it. So that's what coil stock is. It just because the, it's just a round coil of thin metal, like I think it's 24 gauge or something like that, somewhere in there. So, so I think uh, we're getting real close, uh, probably to wrap up here. Um, a couple things I wanna talk about, just in case I lose track of time. Um, we are going to be attending, let me just look at my notes here. So I mean, Make sure I don't screw up the dates. 
Um, we're going to be attending the International Builder Show. That's in Las Vegas, and it's January 21st to 23rd. So we're going to go down there. We're going to take in the show. We're not participating in the show. We're just wandering around down there, checking out the vendors and all the booths and stuff, see what we find down there. Uh, maybe we'll even shoot a video down there this year. I'm not sure. Just kind of a something quick on our phone. We'll see what happens. But anyways, we're going to the show. We're going to be around Las Vegas in that in that time frame, a couple days ahead of that even. And uh, so, yeah, if, you, if you're at the show, is anybody going to be at the show? Let's see if anybody's actually going to be there. Maybe there's somebody watching from Las Vegas. Um, if you're going to be down there or in that area or planning a trip there about the same time, uh, be watching for me. Uh, if you see me and you want to have a quick chat or get a picture or something, we can uh, we can definitely do that. But uh, especially if you're at the show and, and you see we were down a couple of years ago to a hardware show down there. And I was actually surprised. There's a few people recognized me and we chatted, chatted for a little bit. But anyways, we're going to be in Vegas January 21st. Well, probably about the 18th to the 23rd. Uh, so if you see me down there, just don't be afraid to come and chat for a minute or whatever. So I'd love to meet you. Um, so far, I'm not seeing anybody mentioning that they're going to be down there. But uh, So I, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. The other thing, uh, these live chats, we're going to talk and see how this goes once we're all done and, and see if this is something we're going to keep up. Kind of looks like we got enough people coming and wanting to know stuff. So. So far, it, uh, so far it uh, seems to be working out all right. So I think this will be something we continue. We'll just have to see how often we do it and, and that sort of thing. So uh, what else do I got on my notes here? Uh, I, I talked about the notifications already, set, changing your settings on notifications. So, And anybody that's watching this after the live chat, uh, so obviously we're going to keep that up on our channel and, and you might be watching this now well after the fact, but with all these answers of people coming in and everything, it's still, I think, fairly useful to hear some of the answers to it. So, uh, so we got, who do we have got here? Mr. Lacrosse Man 21. We have an old 1911 home that is cold and drafty, looking for the best option to further insulate, re-insulate the home to eliminate the drafts and keep the heat inside. Well, honestly, on an old, older home, I think the best way to go is work from the outside in. So something that's fairly easy to do on these older homes is add foam insulation on the exterior. So it would mean ripping off your old exterior siding or stucco or whatever you got on there. If it's a fairly original, it'll be some kind of wood siding. Take that off back to the wood sheathing, probably shiplap, and uh, put rigid foam on and then house wrap, actually you can do house wrap and then rigid foam, whichever way you want to do it. And then whatever kind of siding you want to do it at the time. I would also recommend though, if you're going to all that trouble, I would change the windows at the same time. Uh, windows are going to be drafty as heck if they haven't been replaced in the last 15, 20 years. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a costly thing, but the payback will be a warmer house and uh, less energy to heat it eventually. So uh, I, would, I would change your windows add foam on the exterior, and then re, redo your exterior finish. So that, that's what I would do. Uh, Charles uh, Probst, last question. Have you ever heard of if you have pressure tube two by fours and put drywall on them, will the chemicals bleed through? Nope, I have absolutely never heard of that. In fact, I most often use pressure treated bottom plates on basement finishes. So when I redo the walls on the basement, I use a pressure treated bottom plate. Obviously, the drywall touches that. I, I've, I've never heard of that. So I, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. Your screws, your drywall screws, may corrode off because they go into there. You should be using uh, proper uh, uh, ceramic coated screws for pressure treated lumber. Anytime you're screwing into pressure treated, there's a special screw you should be using because the other fasteners will corrode off. Uh, Mike Billings, how do you add vapor barrier if I, if I insulate during a siding job? So I assume what you're talking is possibly you're uh, pulling the exterior sheeting off and changing the bad insulation from the outside of the house, which is actually a really good thing. We've, I've had to do this a couple of different times. Um, you really can't. You really can't 
uh, improve the vapor barrier. Whatever is there is there. Uh, the only way to really improve the vapor barrier is pulling off the inside and doing the vapor barrier. Uh, other than, I suppose you could spray foam from the outside, but that's pretty costly. Um, so yeah, no, the answer is really you can't from the outside. Um, although many layers of paint on the inside almost do what a vapor barrier will do. Um, so it, it does help with the paint that you've got on the inside of those two. So. Okay. Uh, I think that's supposed to say closure. C1 Osher. Anyways, while working on a project, I found some extensive termite damage in one of my exterior walls, a few studs and a two by 10 or two by 12, not sure below the load bearing wall. Ever deal with something like that? Well, in fact, I haven't because we have the luxury of not having termites up here. If we do, they can't make it through our winter, believe me, we can hardly make it through winter here. Um, so termite damage is something I'm not super, super familiar with. Um, but the closest thing we get, we can sometimes get ant damage here. Uh, and obviously rock from leaks and that, but sorry, termites is something I don't really deal with. Uh, if you wanted to post that, uh, so did you actually have a, okay, you don't don't have a specific question, but if you do come to the forum because some of our guys on there, they're helping out all the time. They're, they're more uh, apt with working with termites because uh, we've got some guys from down south. So uh, they might be able to help you if you have a specific question. So a couple more here, and then I think we're gonna finish things up here. So, Greggy B, do you recommend adding a vapor barrier on a basement uh, on basement concrete prior to adding vinyl plank flooring? Do you? Oh, okay. So you're talking putting down some plastic over the concrete floor, and then vinyl plank flooring. Honestly, I think it's kind of redundant. Um, you're putting a vinyl product down already. Um, I, I, I really don't think it's needed. Um, and I don't think anywhere in the code that I know of says that you need it. So uh, if you're using some kind of flooring that was affected by moisture, then I would say it probably is a good idea. But uh, vinyl plank flooring is vinyl. It's really moisture doesn't affect it. So I would not worry about putting down poly vapor barrier underneath that. C1, oh, that's, this is uh, closure dude again. <clears throat> or do that, I'm not sure. Uh, I do have s specifics and pictures. I'll jump to the forum with it. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, go to the forum. Uh, you can post your pictures up there, and it's it's just easier to kind of go back and forth that way, and pictures help quite a bit, too, in most cases. So, Kleber, you're back. Hey, buddy. Hey, how do you remove porcelain tile out of a 1950 home? Uh well, I guess it depends. Is this on the floor, on the wall? What is it? Uh, 1950s, so you probably aren't going to have plaster anymore. You're probably going to be drywall. So porcelain tile, if it's on the walls, honestly, the easiest way is to just pull the drywall right off, usually. Unless the tile's really on there bad, it might just flake off. But a lot of times, it's just as easy to rip the whole drywall off and just re-drywall the wall because it's so damaged afterwards. Um, if it's on the floor, porcelain tile. Uh, anytime you're working with porcelain or any kind of tile, safety glasses, gloves too, because the shards get sharp if you're smashing it. Uh, if it's on a concrete or wood floor, just using a, like a rotary um, hammer drill, a little bit bigger one, like I, I don't know if you've seen some of the ones I have, uh, with a big chisel bit in it and just put it on hammer and not drill and just start peeling them off. Usually they'll come off pretty good. Ryan Duran, Shannon, happy new year, boss. Long time viewer, I appreciate the knowledge. Hey, Ryan, I'm glad that you've been around. Uh, I don't know if you've been around since the, since the beginning or what, but uh, like I said, uh, as far as YouTube goes, we've been around since 2010 sometimes. So uh, uh, I'm glad that you're still with us. Eddie TFP, how long should I wait for a flooded basement to dry before a rental? Happy new year. Uh, good question. Well, I, I guess I guess you want to make sure that uh, humidity is down to a reasonable amount uh, for whatever is reasonable for your climate. Uh, you can do a simple test with a piece of plastic sheeting, like uh, just a two foot by two foot square of poly, 
tape it down to the concrete floor and uh, leave it for a couple days and see how much uh, humidity is coming up underneath it and it, you'll see the moisture on the inside of the plastic so um, oh, we're getting a whole bunch of spam here we're trying to get rid of that guy sorry about that um, so yeah you, that's a poly test you can do that on any concrete surface but uh, uh, that would see if your floor is getting dried out enough uh, now you're talking about reno so I I'm thinking you probably removed drywall up so far and insulation and maybe you left the wood intact. So just do some moisture checking. You can check your, with a moisture meter, you can buy a cheap meter and just check your, uh, your wood near the floor and different areas and just see what the moisture level is. And if it's all good to go and you don't have mildew and stuff, you might be good. Time-wise, it's hard to say. It depends how you've been drying it out or what you've been doing. Uh, Abdul Ahai Hill Gregory. I don't know if I got all that right. Are your codes close to Michigan's? Uh, not really close. We're talking Canadian to US for one thing. Uh, our, our climate is very close, so a lot of that stuff will be similar. Um, and I can speak for in Canada even. Different cities kind of adopt different versions of what they want to see. They, they got to meet a minimum code, but it gets interpreted differently or some cities don't keep up. Like, you know, uh, your, your city might be following a code that's from 2015 still. And I mean, it's 2020 now. So uh, different, different jurisdictions are not always 100% the same, but uh, for the most part, they are across Canada with variations as far as Michigan. A lot of what I describe as far as vapor barriers and that should be relevant in Michigan, I would think. But uh, again, you, you really should be checking with your permit office to, to be sure. Uh, okay, same dude here. Should I snake the drain that sewage comes up from? Oh, this was our uh, guy with the wet basement. Oh no, yeah, no, it, this, is, this is the guy with the codes. Okay, sorry. So we're in Michigan. Should I snake the drain that sewage comes up from? Uh, well, if you've got sewage actually backing up, yeah, you've got some kind of blockage. Um, yeah, you, you may might be able to do it yourself. Uh, depends what the blockage is. Uh, if it's something that's you put in the sewer and it's blocking it, uh, you might be able to do that with the snake. If it's tree roots invading from outside, uh, you might actually have a have to have a pro come in and do a rotary to cut those roots off. So kind of depends what's in there. You can also have somebody come in and scope it just to see what the problem is. Jeremy Block, does older home plaster contain asbestos? Absolutely it will. Uh, there's, there's no two ways about it. What kind, how much, that sort of stuff. It's hard to say without sending it away for a test. But if you've got plaster from anywhere before Let's even just say the 2000s, it's most likely, well, it will, it'll have some kind of asbestos in it. Uh, we don't really do plaster around here, so I'm not sure. I'm assuming the new stuff shouldn't. It's been a lot in America forever, so, uh, well, I shouldn't say forever, since the late 90s. So uh, the new anybody doing it from new shouldn't have that, but uh, if you've got old stuff, it'll have some form of asbestos in it. So. Okay, I think, uh, unfortunately, guys, I think it's time to wrap things up. We've been going over an hour and a half here, and uh, I, I realize the questions are still filing in, but uh, I think they would if we stayed here for four or five hours. So we've got to save something for the next live chat. So I, I hope, I know we kind of hit some people a number of times. I know we would have missed some people, and uh, it's just kind of the way it goes. I'm sorry, but keep coming back. Keep trying uh, in our next live uh chats here and like I said if there's something you really absolutely need to know right away like I said we've got the form and uh, that's that's the best place to to go and contact me or one of the other guys there for some help with your project so so I think we're gonna pretty much wrap up here uh, it's been great thank you very much for everybody who's come we've got actually I think our number might be higher now than it was anytime else during the night unfortunately it looks like there's just people starting to join us now and uh, that may have been a bit of a mix up time zone wise or whatever. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, if you subscribe, like I said, I'm just going to reiterate this one more time. If you subscribe to our channel 
and then click the little bell icon that shows up there after you've subscribed. You can set notifications and it will automatically notify you what we're doing according to your time zone as far as live chat. So, so then there will be no mix ups. And I'm, I'm sorry if that was the case and some people are just tuning in thinking we we're just getting started. But uh, like I said, we've been going for about an hour and 40 minutes. So uh, my throat's getting sore and my brain's spinning a little bit. So I, I think it's time to wrap it up. But I appreciate all the super chats as well. That's that's awesome, guys. Uh, uh, you know, that's that's all part of everything that goes in the jar to help us produce the content that obviously you guys are watching. So we had a lot of questions tonight about vapor barriers. So that's obviously... And it is, it's one of those things that people are so unsure of, and there's a lot of mixed information out there. And a lot of it has to do with where you live and everybody's environment isn't the same. But uh, I, I definitely know we had a lot of vapor barrier and basement finishing questions too. So so guys, I think that's everything we're gonna do. Uh Char B, you get the last, you get the last shout out here. Char B, uh, this is really nice. Thanks so much for all your help. Thank you, Char. We'll talk to you later.